my name is Marissa. I'm going to take this down some a little bit below the comments. And I, I totally have this rigged. I've never done this where I'm doing it right now because I'm, I'm attached to a vacuum to give my little stick. So it's a little different for me. Um, my name is Marissa LaRock Kerrig. Uh, my consultant ID is 95712. About two years ago, almost to the date, I actually signed with the company. Um, the September, the first week in September is when I received my kit. Uh, I had never sold a product before in my life. I had no network. I became um, in, engorged, so to speak, in the jewelry. I know it is a change of scenery, isn't it? Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Hi, Eva. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Tisha. Hi, Susan. Um, so long story short, my husband, he's terminally ill, and we were going through battles of him being in and out of hospitals. I found paparazzi jewelry and it like it saved me from my depression right and lo and behold who doesn't get addicted once they get it and they realize how awesome it is I became addicted um, my husband was no longer able to work we lost over a hundred thousand dollars worth of income with him uh, then what happened was as he came out of that hospital and I was still stuck to the screen he was so happy I found something to keep myself busy for a while um, but I was addicted and I had an eBay business. I sold all kinds of, I mean, I sold Barbie shoes that I bought for a penny for 35 bucks because they were Dorothy Wizard of Oz. And, um, you know, I made $100,000 a year doing that. But we had developed this lifestyle never thinking that my husband would be sick and we would be put into these positions. Um, I know my kitchen, right? Hi, Rhonda. Hi, Sophie. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm just giving a little background and then I want to get into giving you guys the tools to move this stuff, right? This is the season. So I found paparazzi and I decided to my husband when we were talking because I was robbing Peter to pay Paul to make things work. I knew my kids were going to lose their dad. Um, I thought it would be a lot sooner. By the way, my husband is still alive. Praise the Lord. Uh, and I wanted to say, <clears throat> I wanted a way to um, make it so my children didn't lose their house. I had one of our children in private school. We, they all were in extracurricular activities. Um, my husband and I had been married a short time. We just made our families blend together very nicely. And we had just really enjoyed our, our comfort zone of the house. And so if we lost that, we were in this place. So I reasoned with my husband and I said, yep, I had, yes, praise Jesus. <laughs> um, I reasoned with my husband and I, I was telling him, I said, you know, I said, here's the thing. I'm not gonna be able to sell a $35 Barbie shoe in a bad economy. And we always based it because he was a realtor on the housing market going up and values and what happens when the housing market drops. And we had already like anything we had saved preparing for that, that was way gone. Uh, it took two years for him to be approved on disability. About a year into this, uh, <laughs> thank you. About a year into this is when we decided that this, that um, into my husband's illness is when I found paparazzi through all these hospital stays. So I reasoned with him, we prayed about it, we researched it. Um, we couldn't find any skeletons hidden in the closet or bodies buried in the backyard. And so I can remember the day that I went to buy the kit. I didn't tell anybody in my family or friends. Um, most of them hadn't even seen me shopping. I had only seen one consultant selling it at the time. Hello, everybody. Welcome. So we, um, we signed up when we got that kit, right? And I can remember, like, I was so excited. I couldn't sleep. I kept thinking of different business names and how I could get this out. Before we even had the kit, I had signed up to every single vendor event. I didn't even know how many people would be there. I just knew that it was my job to get my name out there. I have this fabulous $5 jewelry and people need to know about it, right? So I signed up for every vendor event. I called up every girlfriend I knew. Um, I literally started doing home parties. I had vendor events booked each day of the weekend and I paid for all these in advance. So I was just geeked, right? Well, the kit arrives, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were there. And they opened up the kit with me and they bought 17 pieces right away. They would, they, this was, you know, cause they're Sicilian and Sicilians, they love big sparkly things like I do. We, they were excited, I was excited. And uh, I called my mom to tell her that I was doing this. And she says, why? She goes, why are you gonna do that? You don't have any friends. Who are you gonna sell that jewelry to? And I said, it is amazing jewelry and I am gonna sell it to any single person that I see because of the value that it has. I just have to let people know I have it. You know, my mom basically downplayed me and she's like, you need to get back to the law firm. Um, it was not an option if I wanted my husband to be at home with me, he would have to be in a facility at the time. They were warning me about what was coming. So I said, you know what, this is what I'm gonna do. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you I have a law firm background. 
Um, I did manage the Attorney Grievance Commission for the state of Michigan, which means that I was in charge of an office that governed the law licenses of 42,500 attorneys. Um, we primarily dealt with the bad ones. Before that, I was in a bankruptcy law firm. I was in charge of 15 satellite offices. Um, we had about 45 to 60 attorneys, give or take. Um, we were very busy. And so I had this very professional background. Um, <laughs> it, you know what? Uh, haters should feed you breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Because the better you get, the more haters you get. And that's okay. Because I take that hate and I may let it fuel me to say, hey, I'm going to bust a move on you. You know? So I had always been in this professional environment. So here I am. I'm doing all these events and everything. I bought all this inventory at the time. You guys, you're living in sunshine land. I mean, I know you're the sunshine squad, but we were waiting sometimes up to two weeks for deliveries. And so I had to prepare myself doing all these shows in advance. And I had to take money out of my own pocket to do that. Because if I sold $300 on that show on the weekend, then I knew that on Tuesday, I may not have enough for new jewelry for a show to do. So <laughs> that's right. So I made sure that I bought all this inventory in advance in preparation of this. And I was doing my live shows and I was stiffer than a poker chip. I mean, I was like, I thought I was at the law firm, right? I sat there, um, I was very professional and, oh, thank you so much for your purchase, ma'am. And oh, Mrs. Such and Such. And it was really kind of comical because it was nothing like who I was but it was who I had been put into this box for so long of how I had to be in order to make the amount of money that I made. Um, and so for, for two and a half months, well, what happened was, is we came into the Christmas season and I always, you guys see, if, I know a lot of you guys watch me or I've seen you on my shows or you come just to watch and learn. Um, and my husband says to me, you know, I was in Walmart and I saw the craziest ugly cat sweater I've ever seen and it had all these like light up and it was glowing and I said, you know what? I like that is just hilarious. My friends would laugh their butts off at that. I'm going to buy it. So mind you, stiff as a board and I started only however long ago, beginning of September. This is getting into December and I decided to put it on and before I went on my show, my husband says, you know what, Marissa? He says, you always talk about how you got to wear that crown on your wedding day. He goes, why don't you wear that crown? Because you love wearing crowns. He goes, just blow it off. I think you're too serious when you're on there. He goes, you're not like, you know, you're plastic fantastic. And he goes, well, maybe that's part of the problem. And so I took his advice. I wore this stinking cat. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I took this cat sweater on and I wore it like it was my job with a big old smile. Like it was like my favorite thing to wear because it's kind of my personality. And I had my crown on. And so what happened was, is my viewers went up. All of a sudden, people had a reason to stop scrolling and to watch me, right? And it changed my life because I, I was determined to make this work. And you guys have to have that determination because you have to see the big picture. The problem, if you guys are brand new or you're just starting out, we expect things instantaneously. And I, I had to make things work fast but that meant that I had to put in more hours to figure out what I was doing wrong and what I was doing right. And I had to nail it down and, and take out the bad and put in the good. And I had to figure out how to sell more jewelry in less time, right? And so all of us, we get on our live shows. Uh, thank you so much, you guys. We get on our live shows and hey girl, hey, Crystal's from Detroit, Detroit. <laughs> um, so we get on all of our live shows and, you know, I always say that there's this huge difference and it's something that I can't teach you, but maybe if I put it in perspective for you guys, uh, you guys will get more of a hang of what I'm saying. There's what is called the jewelry robot, right? That's what I call it. That's what I tell my team. We have these, <laughs> aw, you're famous, girl. We have these what are called jewelry, jewelry robots, right? We get on the screen, we pull it off our wrist, and this is the gunmetal, and it's stretchy, and it has this and that. And you can sell jewelry that way. I'm not saying you can't, but the fact is, is that that was me, right? This was my six viewers. I have this fabulous piece of jewelry. I'll ship it to you right away. Um, but I never shared anything about myself. I never went ahead and I put anything out there. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, I, that was a big problem, right? I was so stuck into this law firm box that I had to live in. I've always been a manager at a law office, um, manager at any place that I've ever worked. I have 20 years of management experience and I'm only 41. And so I kept applying this management thing instead of being me, 
right? So the first lesson I can give you guys into selling more jewelry is to be yourself. It is a very scary place to be because it makes us vulnerable, right? But the funny thing is, is that remember how I saw people and I told you guys that this is how I found this jewelry? It was my happy place, right? It took me away from the fact that my husband wasn't coming home at night and I had been in bed for three months. This is what made me fall in love with this jewelry. And so I had to learn to do that and be myself. And when I started to be myself, then all of a sudden things were happening. People liked me. People would message me after my show and say, geez, you're so, you know, you're fun. I really like this. And, you know, I, I was having a bad day and I came on just because I knew you would be there and you'd cheer me up because I don't allow negativity on my show. If you guys come on my show, unless I've done a 12 hour marathon and yes, 12 hours, three, four hour blocks, I do it. Unless you've seen me and I'm at the very tail end, I'm smiling. I am having a good time because you guys are my tribe. You know, who came to watch me? Like they're there for me. So the first thing I can tell you guys is be yourself. If that means, look at, you know, you guys have this guru above you. Patricia is like amazing. You guys, Patricia inspires me. That's why I reached out to her. Um, and I wanna tell you, look at Patricia and she is herself, right? How do you think she became successful? Being yourself is how you find your tribe. And when you find your tribe, your tribe stays with you to shop. It doesn't matter if you share your friend's show and they're on it. They know you make them happy, right? So the first thing I did was I started to be myself. Um, when we got this box and I read this live of the party, my husband, I mean, literally, I had to get up and go to the bathroom because I was reading what it was. And I'm like, oh yeah, a diamond, <laughs> 17,500 pieces. And I was like, this is just impossible to get 17,500 pieces, right? And I can remember even at Christmas, like I had bought all this inventory. Guess what happened with all those shows? My husband got sick, I couldn't do them. And I wanted to fall down because I thought, oh my God, I, I, like I bought this because I knew I was gonna sell it at these shows and these parties. I couldn't leave my husband for that long, not with our kids. And so I, I got stuck with all this inventory, right? And I had my, my bum out moment. Even though I'm getting more viewers, listen, we're all allowed to have a pity party, but you only get it for one day. One day pity party, right? You had a bad day, you tried something that didn't work, you failed, ah, let it go, all right? Like Elsa, let it go, you know? you got to let it go. The next day, you're going to need to come up and you're going to have to get on it, right? You're going to come up with something new because that didn't obviously work. So I hear people say to me, well, I did this vendor event and guess what? You know, there's only so many people here and they put me in the way back corner and I'm like, right, they put you with other vendors, right? And they're like, yeah. And I said, so why didn't you recruit them? And they're like, what? I'm like, First off, find out what their commission is because it ain't 45%. Find out if they get a free website. Find out if they could take three free trips a year. Find out all of these things. So, you know, I, you guys have to use a failure as a win, okay? Even if it's a huge fail, like you're in this booth and you get 10 people to come over to you, you're sitting next to these vendors that sell these products that are so inferior to us. They get a catalog once every once in a while. You know, we're talking like, oh, you get fall or spring. And it's so expensive and it's aimed towards one product market. Let's talk about January, right? Who's sold products before? We're going to talk about how they have Thrive. Woohoo, Thrive. Who can afford Thrive? You guys started out, some of us, we all start in different places. You get a $99 kit. Who can afford to go dump 60 bucks a month on a patch that you put on your arm? And guess what? They only do it for so long because they only care about their health or fitness for so long. So you have to learn how to market this product in ways because we have a different product. We have something that hits everybody. We have a price point that costs the same as a box of cereal and paparazzi has done this year after year and they haven't raised our prices, okay? So I'm saying, <laughs> I know, right? Or the wraps, it works. Guess what? After three times, you figure out it don't work. <laughs> we have a product that when we take it and we dangle it in front of the camera, looking to see if I have something sparkly. And this is part of what you guys need to learn. When you're showing your product, right? Do you just hold it up? Or are you glistening it? And my lighting isn't good in here. This isn't where I do my shows. Are you glistening it so that the light catches those rhinestones? Are you making it sing to them? Okay? Because it's a big part of... <laughs> of what is going to sell this is how you're presenting it. So I've always used to be in that stiff as a box place. When I started, and I can remember, I told you I got out of my box right before Christmas 
And I can remember Pink Friday. And they came out with this necklace and it's called Right to Remain Sparkly. And some of you guys that have been around, I know you know what it is. It's gorgeous, it's emerald color, comes down. I remember I got that in for one of my Christmas shows because it took two weeks to get it. And when I can remember checking out and I was like, ah, so like screaming, let it go through, let it go through. So when I presented that on my show, I was like, oh my gosh, you guys, wait till I show you this. It's going to make you pee your pants because I almost did had a heart attack flat out cold on the floor. If you think I would ever say pee your pants in a law firm, you're crazy. So I took it, I pulled it out and I bought 20 each of them because I wanted that Pink Friday bag. And I went and I showed it and every one of them sold. And that was the big launch, right? I was getting more viewers because I wasn't afraid to be myself. I was getting excited about the pieces that I showed, but I stayed true to me. You're not going to see me holding up a crackle stone going, oh my God, this is fabulous. Like I was so in love with it when I saw, um, <laughs> right? We do. So it's about building the excitement, right? So you guys, I'm going to put it into terms for you guys. When we see Misty Kirby go on and do a preview, tell me you ain't waiting in that checkout line for that wheel spinning around a lot longer than if Misty Kirby didn't do a preview because she's building the excitement and you guys need to build the excitement with your customers before you go live. Do a preview post of what, of like your hot ticket item, the one that you were like, ah, they're gonna love it, right? Do a preview post and go, look what's coming tonight. Now don't launch it as the first thing you're gonna show. Tell them you're waiting for people to come on. Make them wait for it a little bit. You know, the suspense is killing. Just like when, <laughs> yes, Misty breaks the internet. The suspense is killing them. So always sit there and, and build the excitement. You got an awesome share prize. Guess what? You guys went to convention. Y'all better go to convention because that's where it really blows it up. Um, and you have a Z bracelet from that and we're giving it as a share prize. And yes, it is legal. I have emails from compliance saying we can give them as a share prize. We cannot sell them. And so if you guys are doing that, build the excitement. If you're gonna play some game about guess how many hostess rewards, make them be present at your show to win, okay? If you're gonna put it on your page. You guys have to use your tools that you have to build the excitement. And you can't expect to keep doing the same things and get more out of it, right? So I went to Elite Summit and they asked me, they're like, how do you sell this much jewelry? How do you do it? And so I went ahead and I told them, I said, you know what? I said, I, have to, I had to do more work. But guess what? I doubled my sales. So I thought I had topped out at about 400 pieces per show. Um, and I can technically now sell up to 800 pieces in a four hour block, but I had to get a new tool to do it. And there's always steps to this game as to when to get that new tool in, right? Yup, <laughs> yup. So you don't want to, you don't want to, um, this is bothering me that I can't see my mouth. So you don't want to go ahead and not think about cost because sometimes it takes money to make money, right? And so some of you guys are holding out and not buying inventory. I'm gonna tell you the faster that I grew my inventory, the faster my clientele came. The faster I expanded, the further because people were like, that girl's got everything. And people that I didn't even know would start messaging me. So that is what I'm talking about. You guys, the thing is, is that we are all like in this, I was in the all in mentality, right? Big kid all the way. I'm going out and I'm buying this inventory and I'm gonna go do this. And I had it set in my head that I'm all in. I didn't have an option but to make this work after I did it. And if you guys are half in the game, you're half out. Half out means half growth, means if you grow at all. And so you guys have to have that whole feeling inside of you knowing that this is fabulous jewelry. You have to know that this is gonna work. You have to see the big picture and you've got somebody, you've got plenty above you that you can see the big picture. Um, Patricia, Courtney, I mean the list goes on and on of the people that you guys have to see that this works. And so you have to put your eggs in the basket and go to market girls. I'm telling you, invest. Now some of you guys that are just starting out, you're like, well I have the six viewers and I'm t I always say this, there, I'm sure there's somebody on here and don't be shy if you are, that you haven't gone live yet, right? You're making excuses and you're saying, oh I need to go get this and I need to go get that. And I'm doing lots of things and having people over to my house. And so what I wanna tell you about that is this. If I went and I did every single one of those vendor events and I handed out my business card to every single person that walked by my table and I talked to every vendor there was, how long would it take for my business card and I'm in Michigan to get to California? 
a long time. But I get live and I show my video and I get to be me and guess what happens? Somebody is sharing it and guess what? One of their friends or family or coworkers is seeing it in Cali. And so you guys can't be afraid to go live. I always say the first one that you do is just to get done with it. Don't even plan on selling anything. It's just like to get it over with. Get it over with, get it behind you because every single one from here on, see, leaning in, I, there's no shame in your game, girls. I'm not trying to do it to pin you out, but I'm saying, we are going into the magic season and I want to tell you my accomplishments before I give you some more hints on how to sell more. Um, <laughs> like, seriously, so this is the magic season, okay? October, guess what? People are buying. November, people are buying. You guys sitting on the ledge going, maybe I'm in, maybe I'm going to go live. I'm scared. Y'all need to just push it and go live, girls. Because if not, you're missing the opportunity to get your tribe with you. Once you have your tribe, they're going to come back to you religiously. And so what I'm telling you is get live. Get your customers in October, November. We jam on sales in October, November. December, it slows down a little, but only primarily for a minute. And the reason being is because most women have their Christmas shopping done. Most women have to get their house ready because they don't want their family to see that yucky carpet. And they have to clean it because they haven't dusted in six months. And they have to prepare a huge dinner that they're paying a lot of money for. And so they slow down in December, but you know what happens? Guess what? All those crappy husbands that bought them a vacuum cleaner for Christmas, they go return that vacuum cleaner. They get cash in hand. And then magic w-2s and 1099s go out and all of these people are getting their tax returns back and what happens when they get their tax returns back they come spend them with you and if they have been in your tribe because you've won them over through october november and you've got them busting out money then guess what usually paparazzi offers an incentive in january and you can start your team right so this is a great opportunity for you. So this is kind of like the ding, 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 as Stacey Chaffee, because that's my friend, and I'm sure you guys have watched her, the ding, 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 hello, queens, get live, right? So I'm telling you, this is your opportunity, and this is the time for you to do it. And I've been sitting in your group. Patricia was kind enough to let me kind of dip around, and I'm going to get her in my team group so she can kind of see the challenges and things that I present. But all of you have this big grander picture and I would tell you how many times that I get people that will send me live screenshots and these are girls on my team and they'll say, I just can't wait till I can get this many people on my live. Um, two years now, two years. And so what happens then as I say, okay, viewers don't amount to sales, right? Because there's lots of people that have 300 viewers and they weren't standing with me for Pink Diamond this year. They weren't standing with me last year for Black Diamond. So this is important that you guys know that it's not about viewers. Viewers do not equate to sales. Your tribe equates to sales and you building it so that you can go, um, yes, it is. That's exactly what I'm about to talk to you about. So lots of you guys are just starting, right? You have six viewers. Are you getting the sales out of those viewers that you could? And so this is where it makes a difference. So people ask me, how did you get all the all these sales? How do you do it? And so um, I've had months that I have sold $87,000 in $5 jewelry. I do not have a team of people that help me. I do it all by myself. But the, th the big thing and the big change was, was taking and making sets, right? You have to remember that these people are watching you because they love you. They trust you. When you tell them this goes together, they're going to buy from you. <clears throat> so what I'm so showing, and I'll show you guys up here. This is a choker, right? Guess what about this choker? If I can get it off my own neck, because sometimes it's so tight I can't. So if you make sets and you make four pieces, I make it the rule of four. I do not go live without four different pieces of jewelry on me at a time. Meaning I have a choker, I have a, a clip on, I have earrings, I have two rings on my fingers because everything that I wear, <coughs> I sell more of. And they look at me and they like it on me because it looks different on a person than if you're holding it on a bust. So for instance, when I go live, and I'm not afraid to mix and match. See how I have silver? This is a gunmetal, but then I balance it. I have silver, I have a gunmetal crown on. I wear, um, I wear like the wraps in my hair as a bun cover. I put clip-ons, if I can get this off. 
show them versatility because the more value you add to your jewelry, the better, right? So this is a the I think this is the this is the one that came out of convention. This came out of convention. Guess what? I buy like 20 pairs of each clip on earring that come out. You want to know why? Because I put them on my chokers like nobody's business. Do you know how many chokers I am showing and selling two pieces of jewelry at once? Because people look at it and they say, oh my gosh, I love it. And guess what? Let me tell you, sometimes if I, sometimes I've hit that magic button and instead of ordering 10, I've ordered 100. So you know what I do? I put them in my hair bun. And how cool does it look that it's in my hair bun? The other thing is you can put these on your, on your shoes, right? So you go on vacation, you're on that cruise and you want to dress up for one night and it's just a black strappy pair of sandals. How about this? How about you can wear this as a wrap bracelet? So you can wrap it around your wrist twice. And it's a wrap bracelet. You can make it into an anklet. You can make it anything you want it to be. And you can put these clip-ons also on your wrap bracelet. You need to find ways to sell multiple pieces of jewelry at the same time. Now, I'm gonna tell you what the biggest thing is with people. They're actually having, <clears throat> they actually have um, this phobia, right? Well, if I buy that, and they wanna buy it, they do. But it may be a color that they, they're afraid or they don't have this. Most women don't wear one piece of jewelry, right? They wear multiples. And so the best thing that you can do is you can give them many selections to choose from. This is why it's important to buy inventory and grow your inventory because this is how you actually sell more. We have a business, right? We have a business in front of us. And this is my thing about a business. I always say to the girls who tell me, well, I'm waiting till I sell like 20 more pieces to go buy. And I say, okay, where do you do your grocery shopping? Do you go to Walmart or do you go to 7-Eleven? Because 7-Eleven, they ain't got my pumpkin spice creamer, so I ain't going there, right? It is all about the variety, and with the variety gives you the ability to actually make these pieces into sets. Because guess what? I can go and I can look silver and turquoise. If you guys have a hard time remembering what's in your inventory, there are several of us consultants that have a huge website that you can just go look. Don't buy. Look and see and just type in something like, turquoise and silver or turquoise in this and see all the pieces that have recently come out. It is easier to find for your website. Do not make this harder where you're digging through boxes, right? We wanna work smarter, not harder. So making sets, yes, it takes more time, but you can get double the sales out of it because women are saying, oh my gosh, I really want that necklace, but I don't have a bracelet or anything that matches it. Give them what they want. Give them more jewelry. In the meantime, you're making more sales while you're waiting for your videos to get out further and your name to get out further, right? But we have a duty to make that happen. If you want to sell more, you have to do more work to sell more. Going live at the same day and time, which that's a must, is not always going to get you what you want, right? Because you have to be a broken record for yourself. This is the biggest mistake that I see people do. And I made these mistakes, right? I didn't even know who my upline was. So when I started, I thought, I'll give out a bunch of free jewelry and I'll get people on here. And guess what? All I did was get them so that when it came out time to give something out for free, they had their cousins, their sisters, their brothers, and then the bandwidth sucked. And I was losing my customers because they were waiting for that free piece of jewelry. Guess what? It is a price point that you don't need to give things out. And if you are dropping 20 pieces of jewelry on a live show, you're attracting the wrong people. And you want to make sure that you're running a business. Now, how much sense does it make if you guys, I'm, I'm life of the party, so I'm different. I get double hostess rewards, right? But you people that are, not you people, I don't mean to say that, but you guys that are on a live and you give out 10 pieces. If you only sold 20, you only covered that. You're, you're like paying to work. You guys, if I buy jewelry at full price, I never do except for like, I might bug Patricia and I'll be like, Patricia, you got this ring because I would just kill for this ring. You know, <laughs> like, but I can't wear it because if I'm wearing jewelry on my lives that I don't have to sell, then guess what? I, I just sent them to another consultant, right? So I don't buy at full price. If I buy at full price, it is a value piece. It is a piece that I would spend 50 bucks for because I'll get 50 new customers by promoting it. Okay, it's something that I never was able to get my hands on. I don't go chasing jewelry that I should have, that I could have gotten in the back office. My customers will live without it. I promise you that. And so I'm telling you that you guys that are buying jewelry and, and because you missed this hot new release, like the snakeskin earrings, oh my God, we could just die without those, right? What happens is you get into this funnel. And so, okay, you missed it and your girlfriend, you go buy 10 from her. And guess what? You paid out your girlfriend the next day, you missed the next hot thing. 
It, we have beautiful jewelry every day. Do not worry about missing that one piece. If you are going to buy something at full price, my thing of buying at full price is a vintage set. One that I know is a paparazzi set. One that I know is coming from somebody I know. And I use it as a prize, a focal point to bring in new customers once I have my customer base started. It could be a Z bracelet, or well, you can't buy a Z bracelet, but it could be an older Z collection necklace. If I spend $25 on that, I can get 25 customers off of it. So I always say, <clears throat> you know, and the other thing, oh, this thing, this drives me crazy. If I'm gonna pay full price, I get my full price out of it. You don't have to worry about missing one hot piece. One piece does not make or break your business. And the other thing I learned, because I've heard people say, well, I can't sell anything out of albums. Are you training your customer, okay? ADHD, can you tell I bounce a little, sorry. <laughs> So are you training your customer during your show? So many of us make the mistake that we tell them the next time that we're live only at the beginning of our show and the very end of our show, okay? Now let me tell you, I could have a show and it could have dwindled down to 60 customers, but yet I get 85 orders out of it. That's because people fluctuate in and out of your show throughout your show, meaning you need to be a broken record and you need to be repeating. If you have a contest that you're doing in your jewelry group, and it's this awesome Z piece, and it's from back in the day, and da 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 da. <clears throat> you need to be promoting it on your show regularly throughout it. And several of you guys have been on it, and you know that's what I do. I pull out the pieces, and I'll say, guess what? This is our diamond of the month. We This is something that our team does. And I'll say, I'm giving out this vintage Z and this Z bracelet, and I say it four or five times. Hey guys, how are you? I pull it out four or five times, and I also tell them the next time I'm gonna be live, I tell them, how much my shipping is i tell them you know what my michigan sales tax rate is and when my payment is due i hear people say to me all the time i don't know why they're not paying they go well did you tell them when their payments due <laughs> and so when i first started um i did a note card and i actually taped it to the bottom of my phone so that i could remember to regurgitate that information over and over again because i had to make it into a habit and so you guys have to make it into a habit to make sure that people, A, know when you're live again. Do not not be live. If you are just starting out and you do not have a customer base like Patricia or me who have been doing this for a long time, guess what? You miss your live, you're starting back at point blank at zero. Um, the other thing I say is this, to make more money off of the customer base that you have. The thing is, is that you tell them, send me your email address, right? And then they send you their email address. Now, how many of you are actually sending them the link to your jewelry group and telling them that you have albums? So what happens is, is that when you guys do that, if you are doing it, we're automatically assuming that this customer knows the same information and how to use Facebook like we do. And guess what they don't? They don't. Many of them don't even know that's a link that they click. And so when you send that to them, say all you have to do is click this link above and you can join my jewelry group. And it's, if it's a new customer, you say, I'd be happy to hold your invoice for 24 hours. This, uh, this gives them the opportunity. If you wanna go shopping in my albums, if they join that jewelry group and you accept them in, the next thing that you should be doing is sending them screenshots of things circled of how to shop your albums. We make this assumption that <clears throat> I have a business page in a group and everybody runs their business differently. So what I'm telling you is we make this assumption that these customers know how to shop an album. Let me tell you that about 10% actually know how to use Facebook. Many, and if you look at the age ranks of, <clears throat> if you look at the age rank and of that and the statistics of your live videos, you're gonna notice the age range. Most of these people are only on Facebook to get through their messenger to talk to their grandchildren through a live video. They know how to hit the phone button. And we're assuming, we're like, why? Why, why, why are we not getting any business off of our albums or our posts? Because they don't even know that it's for sale. How many of you, if they go to your jewelry group, your album isn't gonna be the first thing? How many of you don't have the actual um, ability to tell that, that they're seeing these items? So you guys have to use the tools at hand. And I say, as soon as you accept somebody into your jewelry group, you go ahead and you send them screenshots and we all have it on our phones now where we can circle buttons. Give them the step-by-step -step instructions. Once they have those step-by-step -step instructions, then tell them this is how you shop my albums. All you have to do is comment sold. I'll be happy to give you your invoice after 24 hours to give you chances to shop. 
But we make this assumption that they know all the things on Facebook that we do. We make this assumption that they know that our invoice is due within 48 hours or that they know how to click that link to get into our jewelry group. And they don't even know it's a link a lot of people. So we have to train our customers. We train them while we're live by telling them how to shop with us again and how to find us. We tell them when they send us the thing about the link, about clicking this link, because a lot of them don't even know it's a link. Once they join our jewelry group, we're then showing them how to shop our albums by sending them a picture because they're too shy. Only 10% of people that don't know how are going to actually message you and say, how do I shop this? Um, <clears throat> so it's a lot better operation. The other thing I want to tell everybody is you're not a doormat, right? For every bad customer, there are 10 good customers out there. If you guys are, um, side two, so close. They're both on our team. <laughs> The, the other thing is, is that we are allowing, because we're new and we have this like desperacy to get these ju jewelry sold, that we are allowing customers to take advantage of us, right? And I learned the hard way. So what happened was, is that I had, I kept having the same customer, like I'd have seven invoices and they'd be like, well, you know, I get paid in two weeks. Guess what? They were holding up my hottest inventory and it made it so that I could not regularly purchase. And if you guys are new into this game, you need to be going and buying. The faster that you can build yourself to buying every day, the hotter pieces at least, because those are the ones that customers know are out and if they're your tribe, they're coming to you, the better. The mistake that we all make is that we start getting really short-sighted, right? So I've been on Patricia's videos and she doesn't even know I'm there. I'm just peeping in on her, you know? But what I always do is I feel like I owe something back to her and I'll share her video. My customers are my tribe, they're gonna come back and shop with me. Let's say that we're on a live and that we only had, you know, I only had four of these earrings and I hold it up and I had two extra customers. And they message me after the show and go, they really, really, um, I really, really want those earrings. Do you know, Do you? can you get those for me? You know what a lot of people do? They go out and they look for these earrings for nonstop. Why didn't you just message somebody on your team? Why didn't you just ask them? If it is your tribe, if you've built this relationship with your customer, they're gonna come back to you. Instead, you're wasting time and money and you're getting customers upset if you don't even bother to try. Um, but you guys have a huge team, you know? And I know a lot of you guys have teams. The first thing I do is I shuffle it off to my team. If somebody says I have it, it goes to the first person that tells me and then I connect them via messenger. That customer's coming back to shop with me. They appreciate that I went out and I found that item for them. Now, I've heard people say, um, <laughs> oh, I'm not on your team. I'm not. I'm a big fan of Patricia's. You know, she's like the rock star for me, and she gave me my next dream, and that's a whole nother story. Um, and I messaged her, and I told her I looked up to her, and that I appreciated that uh, she gave me my next dream. And she's like, what? You sound like a rock star. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, but... I'm like, I'll train your team if you want. And she's like, that'd be awesome. So here I am. That's the story between that. And so uh, the other thing that I want to tell you guys is that some people will tell me I can't get people to share my shows. And so I'm going to tell you the reason why is because they know you only have one of something. They're not about to give up the goods, but they want to be loyal to you. They're not getting other people on your show because you're not buying in multiples. And they want to make sure that they get that hot necklace they know is going to come up and is going to have their name written all over it, right? <clears throat> so we constantly are trying to like build the, build the house, right? We're building this house, but if we are like putting bricks that are chipped in it, the house is going to crumble. If you are getting it so that your customers aren't sharing your show because you don't have enough inventory, and ladies and gentlemen, this is a business, and I know about the American dream because... The problem is, is that you guys have not invested and treated it like a business. You guys are half out. The biggest thing that I see happen right now at the holidays, thank you for everybody who sends their customers my way because they didn't go buy Urban and they haven't been buying kids and they didn't buy hair bows. And you know what happens? All these customers are going Christmas shopping. And this is what I see happen because I have a website. And I know there's no customer buying $400 worth of Urban from me. I know it's a consultant, okay? I don't have to look. What happens is, is that they get all these customers and they're like, well, I was hoping that you had some men's jewelry. And then all of a sudden, either A, they are, they are like on my website buying $400 worth of men's jewelry because they didn't start, they weren't buying it. The variety is key. Or they're buying hair bows. Guess what? 
people come to my lives all the time and that's what they say to me and they'll try to shop in the background and send me screenshots like they weren't on my live and they'll be like do you still have one of these and I'm like yeah and it's right after my live so I know they were on my live show they're hiding they're hiding because they're loyal to you and they don't want you to know and then eventually they just turn it over and they turn around and they say to me you know what I'm gonna take um, I'm going to start shopping with you because she doesn't carry. It's silly of me that I'm buying between two consultants that I'm getting Starlet Shimmer and hair bows from you because, you know, she's not she doesn't buy them and she doesn't have the variety you have. And I had this variety all along. When you are planning out your shows, I do not hold things. I tell them that this is a business and then um, I get very firm. I take control of my show at all times. I do not let somebody take over my show. And I'm answering Tiffany Doherty, if you can see. She says, what do you say to the co customers that ask you to hold things for several weeks? I said, I'm sorry. I said, I can't ask my kids not to eat for several weeks. I can't. It, like, that's my box of cereal for my kids. And so I, I cannot hold jewelry for you because I can't tell my kids that they can't eat for three weeks. I can't get the box of cereal for them. That's what I tell them. What do I do for shipping? I use PayPal. PayPal is the easiest thing. I hear many people say pirate ship. Um, <laughs> you know, you have to remember, their mortgage company isn't going to wait three weeks for them to pay. My mortgage company isn't going to wait three weeks for me to pay. And with the volume of jewelry that I pump through my house, there's no way that I could have an order sitting there. Seriously, I have four children. I have a dog. I have fish. I you, The crazy things that happen in this house, it's got to come in and it has to go out. And so you guys can't be a doormat to people. When somebody comes on your show and wants to take control and says, um, you know that board behind you? Can I see that purple necklace? Well, guess what? There's five of them on there. Are you stopping 121 people from shopping with you to go fishing for that purple necklace? Heck, no, you're not. You're going to tell them, no, you know what? And then you're going to, you know, I'm sorry. I, I can send you screenshots after the show, but I can't hold up my whole show for one person. Or they'll say, can you take this out of my envelope? No, I'm sorry, I can't. I can't stop my show for you. You know, I, like you have to take control. And I'm telling you, taking control shows that you have self-confidence and self-confidence makes people sign with you. If you go onto your jewelry show and you go, hmm, what do you guys want to see today? You didn't know what to show me? You couldn't think of that? It's all about self-confidence, and I, it depends on how, where you are. Um, if you can't afford multiples, then, you know, you listen, it's called Make It Work. I, um, I subscribe to this email, and I do all kinds of trainings on the side. So what I do when I get these emails is I read through them, even if I'm not going to take the training, because they sometimes have just tidbits of information. The first thing that I read was um, successful people they see opportunity. Non-successful people, they see obstacles. Because you know what I'm gonna tell you, and I'm not saying this is you or putting you on the spot, most people that tell me that they can't order inventory are people that I see on other people's live shows spending 25 or $30 that could buy multiples. And I'm not saying that that is you. But you know, what the problem is is that you guys invested into this business. And if you guys are gonna do this business and you're going to be successful in it, it is called keep reinvesting, okay? <clears throat> If you guys take money out, then don't say, now I don't have money to buy new jewelry because it is constantly building that inventory and the quicker you build it and the more you get your face out there and the more that you go to different places, I remove every single one of them and if I can do it for selling $85,000 worth of jewelry in a month for every single customer, every necklace that goes out of my house, absolutely you can do it. You can do it. Successful people see opportunity and I'm not going to have a customer tell me that their necklace chain was broken because everybody's excited and they ripped through a bag. I am not sending out broken jewelry to customers. I am sending my invoices right away. I am shipping that jewelry instantaneously to them paying. And guess what? I set myself apart by doing it because some people, the faster that you invoice, the faster that you ship, the larger amount of return and faster they come back because of their addicted. They need more and they need it right away right? <clears throat> so I do have a YouTube channel. It's Marissa's Bling on a Budget. Um, just like my business page, I am universally the same thing. You guys are have to remember, and you guys have a guru on this, right? She is like the queen of algorithm. She is the queen. She's knowledge, guys. You guys have all this knowledge. I see how often she goes live for you guys. A lot of teams don't run this way, but I'm going to tell you the other thing that is very frustrating. You guys are not paparazzi accessories. If I do charge for shipping, absolutely. I charge $4.50 flat rate and I give $75 um, free shipping. 
So I encourage them to buy more from me. And it does not cut into my profit margin at all because I'm here to ship volume because volume brings me more customers. So uh, the thing about it is, is that this is what really frustrates me, right? And I understand like you have this one customer, they live next door to you, you're just gonna buy it off of a website and get it to them because you wanted to do it, you asked around, nobody had it. I ship out a package to somebody and their address says paparazzi accessories. How are your customers gonna find you again? Are they gonna go to paparazzi accessories? Is that how they're gonna find you? I go to your personal profiles. I scope you out. And it says, I work at paparazzi accessories. I hope you guys know that that's against compliance. That is like biggest compliance. Like you are an independent consultant and if your PayPal address, your return address, if your profile says that you work at paparazzi accessories, that's a lie, you don't work there. You work at, you know, the Sunshine Squad Boutique. And you know, you work something at, at whatever the name of your business is. And I think to them, myself, I thought, <clears throat> geez, how do these people not understand that how is their customer? You get somebody on there and this is the first time they ever shopped with you. How do they find you again? Um, you guys don't even have your name on the box. Some of you guys don't even send a business card and they have no way to find you. And then I go to your profile picture and it's not you. You've got your kids, your dog. Um, you have like some crazy saying, you have a picture and I always laugh because my husband was in real estate and when I'd walk into the office, all their pictures were like their high school pictures. They're like 45 years old, you know? Yup. I got older. I got some wrinkles under my eyes. I've gained about 80 pounds. Um, I, sometimes I have really dark roots, but this is what you guys need to be. It is all about visibility. You guys need to be seen. You need your profile picture. You need to have your face on your business page. You need to have your schedule on your business page. You need to be not having paparazzi accessories as the place that you work, because you don't work there, honey. You don't. And paparazzi is gonna come straight you down. You guys have to be totally visible. You guys that have locked down profiles, why? You guys that are are um, not posting, like, okay, this is it. And I I know I've seen Patricia's training. I watch her like a, like a dog, you know? I'm like, oh, give me more, Patricia. And so I'm watching and I see her training and I get frustrated because you guys are making this all business and this is not just business, this is fun. If you are not having fun, you are not doing it right, okay? This is not like, oh my God, I've gotta count the nickels and dimes. Yes, you have to operate a business, so you should kind of learn how to do that. However, these people that are watching you, you're trying to find your tribe, they have to know something about you. I can't count how many people, and I watch everybody. It doesn't matter if you're on my team or not. I'm learning every day. I learn it from you guys. I learn it from anybody. I can't count how many times I've watched some of you. I don't know that you're even married. I don't know that you even have kids because you're that jewelry robot. Look at, this is gunmetal and it's awesome. And you know what, they're, they're jewelry monsters. They're going searching for live videos and when they find somebody that talks to them and gets them to talk back, they're staying. <clears throat> so the jewelry robot, what I get the most reactions on on my business page is if I take a picture of myself and my family, and it could be that we went out to eat for our anniversary, and I say, thank you, paparazzi. Because I'll tell you what, when my husband was in bad shape, there was no dinners, right? We were cooking the ramen noodles, we had the soup cans out, um, you know? <laughs> Whatever we could do that I could coupon our way to eat. And so what I figured out is that just you posting a picture of you in your kitchen with your daughter and being like, look, it's her first day at cheer camp. Everybody root her on. They get curious just because of the color of your wall or the picture in the background because we are curious beasts, right? And so these algorithms and everything that they're doing, you guys that are jewelry robots, this is all you know how to do is buy this and it's gunmetal and it's stretchy and... I was there guys, I was there, but it's called be yourself. I see people and I'm like, okay, I don't understand number one. And I heard Patricia say this, it came from her. She's like, dude, if you hate your life, I don't wanna watch you. I don't wanna watch you if you hate your life. I hear this like, you know, complaining on their live. Listen, the first thing I do, and I have a gauntlet. Some of you guys have watched me, I have an affinity gauntlet and I'll bring it out and I'll be like, ain't no tea up in here, I'm gonna have to boot you. Like, I don't want to hear about your drama. I don't want to hear how your neighbor did this. Like, this is, a, this is the happy zone. Happy, you know? Because I know my customers come to me looking for that. And I know that when I get on, I'm happy. And so I know I get, I get people that, and I have this one lady and she'll come on and every time it's like drama, drama. 
And I write to her and I'm like, okay, Ange, I'm going to tell you, when you get on here, Ange, ain't no drama, no tea up in here. I got to say goodbye to you. Uh-uh, bye-bye. This is happy zone. So what you guys need to do is you need to build your tribe. If you are not telling them who you are, if you are not giving them ways to find you by constantly repeating yourself on your lies as to how to find you again, because people come in five minutes late and guess what? They're watching you in bed and they go to bed 15 minutes early. And if you're constantly not trying new times to go business, <clears throat> Then you, like for instance, let's say that you go live Tuesday, Thursday. This is how I made my name. Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sundays, right? Every religiously eight o'clock, kids are sick, whatever's happening, dogs puking on the floor next to me. I went live. It didn't matter. Those were my times. If you put the time out there, they will make the time for you. But once they make that time for you, do not not show up. And so I would go religiously on those times. <clears throat> but what I learned is this. When those people, and especially how this is happening um, with the Facebook algorithms, when they share your video, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday night at 8 p.m., you know who sees it on their friends list? Only the people that are up or are not like on Facebook at that time. What happens to all those people that are at home, right? So you can do a surprise live, boom, the day before you're gonna go live or that early in the morning, try a noon live. And you know why? Because they're at work. They're still going to come on because at work, what are we doing on our lunch hour? If we're lucky and get a lunch hour, we're spacing through Macy's. Create an awesome share prize, excuse me. When they go ahead and they share that video, what they're doing is they're hitting all their friends that are at home during that time. They're hitting the people that are on disability. They're hitting the housewives. They're hitting the people that just had surgery. And so you are having access to a whole new wing of their friends, right? <clears throat> who, when they shop you and find you for the first time, you are repeating when you are going to be live next. You are saying it throughout the show. You are offering the best share prize. None of that hostess garbage that you guys are like, man, I got 42 of these, I'll use it as my share prize. Make them wanna share your show. Then, when they send you their email address because you're telling them how to pay, they are gonna go ahead and they're gonna send you the email address and you're gonna give them that jewelry link, right? So what happens is, is that people are home during the day then when they catch your show, yeah, maybe what happens is, is guess what? When their family comes home, it's family time. They're not on your live at night and they're not even on Facebook. By the time they wake up in the morning, that share is way down their feed. Ain't nobody digging it two miles down to find it. So now you're giving that opportunity. Then you create the invite to the next show. I would love to hold your invoice. You know, I have a show tonight or I have a show tomorrow. Remember, you guys, you are the person filtering your business to you over and over again. And you have to continually do that by presenting ways for them to get more value, right? It's just like showing the choker. And I don't know what I did with my, there it is. It's like showing the choker with the clip on earring, right? You're giving them more value. How would you like to shop my show tonight? It's at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, you, are, you could have an event created and tag them in the event if you get them to like your business page. You want them to do that, right? So you're giving them more value by saving on shipping by doing and giving them another show to go to. You could say, even if you can't make it tonight, maybe you can shop my video the next morning. So the other thing that I found out that a lot of people don't realize is that, <clears throat> how are you guys creating more talk on your shows? So I get people and they'll say, you know what? I can't get on anybody to talk. I ask them questions, I ask this. Well, number one, let me tell you what women find value in. And, you know, I grew up with all guys. I'm a tomboy, believe it or not. I released my inner sparkle later on. And so what I find is that women like to have their opinion asked, right? So if you guys can go right to, okay, look, I need to get an SUV. Can you guys tell me, do you guys have an SUV? Um, what do you guys recommend that I look for? Or we have kids and you tell them what they're using it for. If you ask their opinion, they will stay. People that are engaged with you stay shopping with you, okay? So the other one that I like to do is nostalgia, right? Everybody, we go to this happy place thinking about our first car or our first job or our kid's first birthday or the best Christmas present we've ever had. And so when you're on your, on your lives, if you want to incite some type of good feeling, because good feeling people, they buy jewelry. So you could say, you could talk about, I was thinking about what my, my first car was, right? And I, I'll tell them the story about my first car. You know, mine was like a, a Grand Am and it had like holes in the wheel wells so that in the winter the water would come in and freeze in the back seat. 
and they all start laughing. And so they'll start telling me what their first car was. And then I'll tell them, what did you want to be when you grew up? And I'll tell them I wanted to be an attorney. And then you should see, and then I'll say, okay, so now what are you guys now? People that are engaged with you, but you have to find the balance, right? Meaning you have to be able to show jewelry and do it. Practice that with your family. Practice it with somebody because there's a balance, right? You show jewelry, you sell jewelry, you're talking about yourself, you're telling them how to find you again, you're giving them more value for your jewelry, you're selling two pieces at a time instead of one. You know, the other thing is, and I know, I know I have some girls, like they are the stack monsters, right? They can stack jewelry like nobody's business. And so I, when I sold this, I sold three at a time. Sometimes four people, they would buy four. You want to know why? Because guess what? You could put, and you could put three of these stacked up here. And girls, you have an exact matching bracelet. Wear it. I came back from convention. I bought 300 of these at convention. Okay? They're almost gone. I think I have like 12 left. And I'm telling you, it was because I created the value. I wore it on my live. I was not afraid to wear three of them stacked up. Create, create, create the excitement. Give them the idea. They are watching you for your fashion cues. They see what you wear and they love what you wear. Right, some of you guys have so many kids at home and let's face it, kids, they're a hot topic, right? Or let's talk about husbands. I remember one time I was so frustrated because I went to go live and you're racing around the house and you have five minutes because you gotta be there. And I can remember I went to the bathroom, the first one I looked, no toilet paper. I go to the second bathroom, no toilet paper. I'm like, dang it all, like I was so ticked, right? Because you have to go to the bathroom before you're live for four hours. Like, you shouldn't be getting up in the middle of your live to go to the bathroom. And so I went to the bathroom, and I was so upset because, lo and behold, then somebody had taken my hand towel, right? So I, I washed my hands. I scourged to the bathroom or to the kitchen to wash my hands and use the paper towel. And, oh, girl, this is you. You, you getting stuck inside yourself. And so, right. So you're like freaking out. So I get on the live and I was so ticked at the time because of course something else with the kids. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm like, I just went through the, you know, I don't understand how I am not the only woman in this house and it's always me changing the toilet paper. Don't worry guys, I wash my hands. However, that's what took me to get on here because not only did I have to find the toilet paper, restock the toilet paper, and then I had to find the paper towel because somebody took my hand towel and you would believe how much, I mean, every woman spoke up and was so like, engaged over the toilet paper like seriously over stupid toilet paper and that is what i'm telling you guys to do you guys do not have to reinvent the wheel you have awesome jewelry right i told you guys the problem is is that you are not giving them a way to find you um your name is not in your business name which i you know if you've already established yourself it's too late now but you got to establish yourself as your business name and make yourself universally and known as that business the other thing is that <clears throat> once once we have this, like, we think that the end all is fa Facebook, right? Like, oh my God, Facebook. Guess what? We're swimming in a fishbowl. We're all bumping arms in there. And now we have the algorithm beating our door down. And so the problem is, is that, you know, we, 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 it's, we're like old dogs, right? And like any other device is like a new trick. Now, let me tell you how I started getting my real big buyers on Pinterest. I would create a board on Pinterest and I would say, these are my favorite pieces that are in my inventory. And then guess what? I would have the graphics because guess how many people, guess how many people, guess how many of us are on Pinterest looking for things? Do you know how many customers go looking for jewelry on Pinterest? That's a whole new market. We are so focused on Facebook. And let me tell you, you guys have kids, either they're a Snapchat or they're an Instagram and maybe they spend five minutes on TikTok, right? They might have a Facebook profile. We're lucky if they spend more than a few seconds here. And so what happens is, is this. We are devoting all this time to Facebook. We are not putting out there that we are live anywhere else. And guess what? Half the people on our friends list, they only spend five minutes a day on Facebook. And we could be bringing them in from all of these other places. Like, you know, there's a million of them. TikTok, uh, the crazy one. I can't remember what it's called right now. You know, Twitter, which I dislike Twitter, but I'm still on it. There's Instagram, Snapchat, you name it, it's out there. And you guys are focusing on one trick pony style. And I am telling you, you can always make a board on Pinterest. You, every place that you go and you make your presence known, because if you're waiting to make, win a necklace for people to know who you are, you're gonna be waiting a long time because you ain't gonna win that necklace. I work this business inside and out. Um, you know, I don't answer 
questions regarding compliance. You need to manage and, and reach out to compliance, compliance at paparazziaccessories.com to find out what your limitations are because it is different for me because of my website and having the presence on Pinterest, okay? Some of you guys are using programs like Buy It Live. You guys are using programs like Common Sold. I say there is a step-by-step -step as to <clears throat> how you guys are gonna be able to get more business, but you guys are afraid to spend that 15 bucks for the text alerts, okay? Text alerts are gonna bring you more business, okay? I'm gonna tell you a little story. I had the website and everybody thought that that was the end all and that's how I made it up on that stage after not even being in the company a year with the highest sales rank. It had nothing to do with my website because if I wasn't putting in the base work and telling people I had a website, my website never would have been found. Nobody would have ever shopped it. I was pulling down $200 a month and thought I was just the queen of sauce on it, okay? The key to this is, is that you have to do the base work by getting your presence onto all these other social media resources. I don't care. I don't say like try to like master all of them at the same time. Pick one. Create a presence. Find out how to push people. I call it swishing them in a circle. You swish them from one place to the next place to the next place. Text alerts. I say when you have 10 to 15 viewers, you sign up for text alerts. I say that you should never have a website unless you have reached Diamond Life of the Party because now you have a following and you're selling that jewelry and you have variety on your website. I say, and these are all my personal opinions, um, I say there's several different places. I bet you that Patricia can tell you which one she has. Um, I say that if you don't have 45 or 50 people that buy it live or common sold might not be for you because you need to have extra inventory and you need to have a good customer base to shop it. I think that there is steps. Text alerts go out. You can send them to your customers when you are live notifying them. You will have a much better chance than battling that Facebook analytic. So <clears throat> you guys have to go ahead and you have to not be afraid to spend money to make money. This is a business. A business was not made off of $500. Not in America. A business was not made off of $99 because I'll tell you, what happens is, is that we get into this pigeonhole and this is my $99 kit spiel. And yes, you can do it. It is a lot harder work. And I don't know many people that have the dedication to put up with the beating their head against the wall with the $99 that last, okay? I am not saying you cannot do this with a $99 kit. What I'm saying is it be, gets to be so frustrating because you didn't have the tools to start your business in the first place to see what it could really do for you and you get frustrated before you even get started. So what I'm telling you is <clears throat> that you guys need to go ahead and you need to invest. Do you see Do you see the value? Do you see the big picture? Do you see that we have a price or a product that is inferior to any other jewelry out there, okay? We have a product that kills it. We have the ability to sell it to everybody, okay? And it's not a seasonal thing. Once people see this, once people get addicted, they come back, they come back, and they come back. And that is what we have to take note of. We also have to make sure that our presence, like I said, they have to be able to find you again over and over and over because, I'm sorry, they might just remember that um, you're Patricia Shevlin or they might just remember Patricia and they're like Patricia Paparazzi, Patricia Paparazzi because they're looking at the package that got sent to them and it just says Paparazzi Accessories. Paparazzi accessories. So that's right. And you know what? Somebody said to me, well, what about, can't you guys just, why didn't they sell it in Walmart? Because they want to be known as the $5 jewelry company. Because they are letting you build your dream. That is why they make you sign up under somebody so that you have this guidance. Guess what, guys? If you're in this video right now, you signed up under the right person because you have Patricia rocking the house that can do this for you. <clears throat> Tax Alerts is a company that you can get that will go ahead and you can ask your customers to sign up for it. You can notify them when you are live. Um, when, you know what, I'm gonna tell you the best thing to do, I walk into my dentist office, I take my kids to the appointment, I bring a bling bag, I start handing out jewelry for free like I'm a monster because it takes money to make money. If you guys are sitting there and you're thinking I'm gonna hand them the ugliest pieces that you deem as ugly, then then it's, you know, what are you, what are you giving them? What reason are you giving them to come to you? But I am not afraid to somebody that I know does not know what this is and give them a piece of jewelry and say, hey, I sell this stuff for five bucks. I wear this jewelry outside of my house. I have a pocket full of business cards with me. And as somebody says, says, I love your necklace, I take it off my neck and I say, here, have it. Here's my business card. I sell this for five bucks. 
If I am out shopping for my kids for school clothes and I hand them cash and they said, and you know, they take it and they're like, I'm like, you know, five years ago, four years ago, there's no way I could actually have bought my kids clothes and cash. But here I am doing it because I sell this $5 jewelry and I made $220,000 last year doing it. Guess what? It piques some interest. Their eyes raise up and they take my business card. So you guys have to learn to market yourselves. If you guys just think that going live at the same time every Tuesday and Thursday is going to get you there, it isn't. You have to get into new places. You have somebody that knows algorithms like a beast. You should be following every word that she says. When I started, I started by watching all of these people that I, and I'm the type, I'm a giver, right? So I told Patricia, like I messaged her and I had the weirdest question for her and it was actually like last Friday. I was out shopping with my daughter and I said, what size shoe do you wear? She's like, what? I know, I'm like, I know a weird question. She's like a six and a half. And I'm like, cause I saw these shoes, they're perfect for you. I thought of you right away. <clears throat> but, and she's like, what? Okay, pay me, pay me and you get it. And I go, no, I go, because I go, I steal your brain waves all the time. I said, you gave me my next big dream. And I said, that is, you know, it's me like saying thank you. And she's like, what? And I said, <clears throat> I told her. And so what I'm saying is like, when I go onto these, yeah, I wasn't there to buy. Julia Willing, Will, William, Willing, Williamson, Willingham, Willingham. Julia Willingham is the first consultant I saw. She has a video on YouTube. If you guys aren't on YouTube, you're missing the boat. Guess what? When Facebook goes down, you can sell on YouTube. Get your subscribers built up. You know, you guys have to have that backup plan for Facebook crash because it happens. And so I watched Julia Willingham and as soon as I saw her, she says the five things I hate about paparazzi. Look how many views she has on that video. She doesn't hate paparazzi. Go to it. Watch it. She tricked you. Hello. She loves paparazzi, right? But I remember that I, when, as soon as I saw her, because I didn't know who my upline was at the time, I started watching her live videos. I thought, what a marketing genius that she put out that she hates paparazzi and has all these views on it when it was never anything negative about paparazzi. And so what I did is I started watching her live videos and I'd tell her, I wasn't the creeper sitting in the background and say, not saying anything. I'd say, hi, Julia. I'm just here to learn from you, girl. I wasn't there to poach her customers and I shared her video because that's what I felt that I should do. I'm taking and learning from her, I'm gonna share. I built this camaraderie with all of the people, <clears throat> y'all. I built the camaraderie with all of these people and so I always dreamed in every live show, this is another thing, you need to tell your customers your goals. Your customers, they start living your dream with you and they get entrenched. So every day, even when I started, I told them as soon as I found out that you could win a necklace named after you, that I wanted that necklace named after me. And the other thing I always say is someday I'm gonna name this jewelry. I wanna be the person that names this jewelry because I know I could name some, some crazy jewelry, right? And so I would tell my customers that every day. Then I was telling them when I heard that the necklace came out in February, the contest. Do you know that every day in February, those customers were checking with me going, what do we have to do? How do we help you? And I'd say, just sprinkle me, sprinkle me. I said, share, because we were allowed to at that point. And I'm telling you that they start living through you. So a lot of you guys might know the Natasha that was released this year. She is one of my personally sponsored. And what happened was is that I told my customers that Natasha was going for the necklace and I wanted her to get it really badly. And I told my customers to leave my live show and go share her show when she was live. I would post her live show and I would tell my customers, please share it. Do you know how many shares this girl was getting? She was getting like 200, 200 shares a show because I asked my customers to do it to help her. She was live every day in March, don't get me wrong, except for two. And, but you have this influence, you are building your tribe. Now, some people, you guys have a harder time connecting, right? And so I'm giving you examples of how to do it. The first thing that I learned to do, and people always say, I hate invoicing. It is work, it is work. Um, the, first thing, <clears throat> the first thing that people tell me is, I don't like to invoice, you know, that was my favorite thing to do. Because sometimes you're so caught up in the show, um, you're so like caught up in the moment that you're not focusing. And, but at the end, when you pull, oh, and that's the other thing, I wanna show you guys a trick. When you pull their envelope and you start invoicing, you start realizing, hey, she's an earring girl. Hey, she's a gunmetal girl. Now you guys, <clears throat> well, we're not here to complain, Christina, because that's exactly why you ain't gonna get any viewers. <laughs> Don't complain about the girl you signed up under because you're on a team and you're here in this video right now that you have lots of resources. I've been through this. So what happens is, is that we go through that envelope and we look at it 
And I would see, oh my gosh, every week she's got gun metal, right? So I'd see that perfect gun metal piece come out on the website and she'd come on my show and I'd be like, oh girl, Crystal, I got that gun metal piece just for you. And then guess what? She feels like I'm her personal shopper. That girl knows me. I'm not going anywhere else because that girl's shopping for me, right? The other thing is, is that I see you guys taking forever when you guys are putting things in envelopes, right? Because I watch everybody. I'm never done learning and you shouldn't be either. You should never be satisfied with just going live on Facebook. If you guys want to sell more, go to more places, do more things, put more work into it. So the first thing that I learned is that you guys can open a free postal office account, right? USPS.com. You guys can actually get your mailing materials for free. You can get a box of these padded envelopes and it's free. Full free, full free, it is. And they'll ship them right to your house, a box of 50. Now this is what I see, you guys are looking for, for baskets all throughout your life, right? You're like, okay, uh, Patricia wants this, and uh, what are you doing? Get these envelopes, right? Get them full free. When the customer comes on your show, write their Facebook name on the envelope. Have a paparazzi box next to you. As the more people come on, then you go ahead and you're putting these envelopes in alphabetical order, okay? Um, Y'all, just keep at it. You are putting these in alphabetical order, okay? What happens is, is that next time Patricia wants something, I just thumb through to Patricia's name and stick it in her envelope instead of searching all over which basket is Patricia's because it got out of my hands. The other thing is, is that unless Patricia had, has over a pound, I don't ship them in a padded flat rate envelope. What I do is I actually will put Patricia's stuff, I'll get it all into however I'm gonna ship it out to her, and then I take this envelope, I put it back in the bucket. Now, I will have two boxes on my next live, <clears throat> right? So when I see Patricia come on my next live, do I make a new envelope for her? No, I just go pull out the Patricia envelope and move it to my empty bucket, because Patricia's here to shop with me today. And I continue to filter new envelopes in according to their Facebook name and get it. How do you get, you open a USPS.com account. You can get all your priority supplies, your priority mailing boxes from them. I'm gonna tell you that the biggest thing that did me a solid, right? This is the solid, right? The solid thing was, is that I set myself apart from other consultants. <clears throat> a, by invoicing right away. B, by actually shipping it right away. C, what I did to these new people, because when you first start out, you don't have a hundred viewers on your live, I wrote them handwritten thank you notes. When I was a girl, and I know it sounds crazy, the first thing that we did after we went and we had our birthday party or anything like that, is that um, the next day before eight o'clock, I better have a thank you note written to every single person that gave me a gift. I better have it or I didn't get to keep the gift. That was my mom's rules. You can use, you can, no, you only can use those for shipping priority, yes, over a pound. You can't use it if not. However, what you, what, what, what I'm telling you guys to do is that if you write these thank you notes and you write them out to somebody and it doesn't have to be your memoir, it can just be, thank you so much. I just started my new business and I really appreciate you for coming on. You guys, I don't care if you wrote it on a piece of printer paper, you have already gone 90 above and beyond 99% of the consultants out there. Okay. So this is the type of thing look at the age range that shops from you you know my videos are 45 to 65 year old women the, guess what my mom fits in that age range guess what my mom was the one making me write those thank you notes and it made all the difference i've had customers that have been with me for two years um i've given you guys a lot of information i want to tell you guys that i love doing things like this because i love helping other people uh i have a youtube channel it's marissasplayingonabudget.com, and I have two videos that I know. There's extra tips in this one. It's how to blow up your business in 2019. There is another video, um, and it is called How to Sell Jewelry on Facebook Live, and it gives you a lot more walkthrough. But I wanted to give you guys some fire. I wanted to tell you guys, get in there, right? Don't sit there. This is the season. Those of you guys that aren't live, come on, y'all. You want to sell this? Do you got the dream? Make your dreams happen. Um, so I want to tell you guys that I love doing trainings like this and I especially love doing them for people like Patricia. Patricia goes out of her way to help other consultants 
And that is something that I feel like I want to help other people as well. So that's why we do these YouTube videos. Don't wait, okay? Don't wait anymore. Get out there and go live. See your vision. Why did you join in the first place? Remember your why. You know, I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to tell you that, um, so last year I grossed $475,000 and I actually took in $220,000 in net income. And then I only had a team and I think that income out of that 220 totaled 11,000. I never had a team. You guys can do this, okay? You can survive on sales. I won that necklace. I've never sold the product. I had a viewership of six people for three months. See why you started. Remember what you're doing. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'm just going to leave it open for a minute here in case there's a lag. And I hope you guys have a fabulous night. And please take advantage of this season. This is the time to grow. This is the time to get these trainings in. Oh, you guys are welcome. I love doing this. Um, you know, your why changes. I can feed my family now from this. And so now I'm trying to help other people feed their family. <clears throat> And Patricia is a really giving person. <laughs> and I'm so appreciative because she gave me my next dream. Her moving into that house told me that I need to go to where I belong. And so my YouTube is Marissa's Bling on a Budget. You guys are always welcome to come by and watch my live shows. You don't have to buy anything. You can enter my dang share prize. I don't care. Just say hi. Don't be the stalker in the corner. I, you know, people feel obligated to do something and I want you to know you're not going to learn unless you watch other people and you find what you like and what you don't like and what works and what doesn't. Um, go get them, girls. This is the season. Thank you so much, Patricia. I really appreciate you. I can't wait to give you your present. I'm hoping it gets here because I had to order it from out of state. <laughs> I ship, no, I do not always ship priority. It depends on the ounces, but I do always ship in a box and it talks about it on my youtube channel um that that live video that i say the going live it's a two hour video it is like the nuts and bolts like i'm here to bring you the fire and i'm here to get your wheels rolling so uh i use paypal i use paypal because i don't like doing the extra strip of pirate ship and i think that sometimes i'm a little dyslexic and i like to transpose numbers and sometimes i don't copy the whole thing i like the onus to be on the customer <laughs> Patty's the bomb. You guys have a great night. Um, thank you so much, Patricia, for letting me absorb in your group. I so much appreciate everything. Yeah, absolutely. You can go ahead and send me. A, I, I had like a huge tragedy happen before that I went live today. So I may not respond to you right now because that's why I'm in my room and not in my kitchen. <laughs> because I, I live up to my obligations. Uh, and I, I want, I volunteered to do this and I'm like, I'm not going to tell her 20 minutes beforehand this and this happened. So if you go ahead and send me a message, yeah, I'll be able to help you, um, as much as I possibly can. But I, I, I have a team. So I like we're at 309. I, I, my sole thing is to them, but if it's a quick thing, absolutely. Uh, you should be able to find it right when you go into the shipping and you say print shipping label, you're going to see that there is a drop down and it'll say priority. It'll say first class. It'll sh There's several different choices there. Um, number one, I would say that I wouldn't have been able to build my inventory if I didn't make sacrifices around my house because I saw the big picture. You guys are going to need to go out. I don't care what it is. You know what? There's lots of ways to make money. I mean, look at communities that you guys have recycling that you get things back for. How many schools just dump things into the garbage? There's like a million and one ways to make money quickly. I mean, I, you know what? Going to college, I sold my plasma. Hard times call for hard measures, but I saw the big picture. And, it, and you need to find the opportunity to make that money to buy that inventory. I know my mom doesn't have your number, girlfriend. <laughs> okay, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And I hope that I helped you in some type of way. And thank you so much for this opportunity, Patricia. <laughs> Right? We do what we have to do. You know, we do what we have to do. <laughs> Good night, ladies.